All right, so continuing on with the solutions for our sample test, let's look at number 23. So 23, we've got 5 square roots of 2 minus 3 square roots of 2. Remember that you cannot add or subtract radicals unless the radicand and the index are exactly the same. So the number underneath the radical, the 2, the radicand, and the index, the fact that this is that these are both square roots, not cube roots or something else, those have to be exactly the same. If they are, then I just combine my coefficients, so 5 minus 3 is 2, and then I keep that radical exactly the same. We said it was kind of like if you had 5x minus 3x, you would do 5 minus 3 times x, and you would get 2x. So here we're going to get 2 square roots of 2. Now notice the difference between 23 and 24, the difference between when you're adding subtracting and when you're multiplying. When you're multiplying radicals, these do not have to be identical. So I'm going to go through and first off I'm going to put my coefficients together and then I'm going to put my radicals together. So this is 5 times the square root of 2 times 3 times the square root of 2. You can multiply in any order, so that's why we're putting our 5 times 3 together to be 15, and then our square root of 2 times square root of 2 together to be square root of 4, which gives us 2. Remember, when you have a pair, you can take it out from underneath the square root. So 15 times 2 would give me 30. All right, then for number 25, we've got negative 2 square roots of 18 plus 4 square roots of 72. And when you first look at that, these are not like terms, and so you might think that you can't combine them. But we always want to give our radicals in their simplest form. So let's go through and let's simplify the square root of 18. So 18 would break down to 2 times 9, and 9 would be 3 times 3. So square root of 18 is going to be 2 times 3 times 3. So you'll notice we have a pair of 3's, so we can take the 3 out. And then we don't have a pair of 2's, so the 2 is going to have to stay underneath the radical. So now I've got negative 2 times 3, or negative 6 square roots of 2. All right, now let's come over and let's work this guy. And again, you can treat this like an entirely separate problem. You could cover this up with your hand or with a sheet of paper so that you could just focus on this one little piece over here, one piece at a time, so it's not so overwhelming. All right, so square root of 72. Uh, that's even, so I'm going to divide both of those by 2, and I'll get 36 times 2, and then 36 would be 6 times 6, and each of the 6's would be 2 times 3. So that's going to give me 2 times 3 times 2 times 3 times 2, and so that was 1, 2, 3 2's, and 2 3's, so there's our 3 2's and our 2 3's. That's our square root of 72 right there. So remember that when you have a pair, you can take one out, so I have two twos. I'm going to take one out. Then I have one more two that does not have a pair, so it's going to have to stay underneath. All right, then I have two threes. That's a pair, so I can take one of those out. So now I've got four times two times three, so four times two is eight times three is 24, and then we can bring our square root of two down. Please remember that when there's no sign in between, that's multiplication. So that's how we knew it was 4 times the square root. And so when we were able to take some values out of the square root, that's how we knew that we were still multiplying by that 4. So now if you'll notice, I do have like terms because my radical is exactly the same, square root of 2 and square root of 2. So I'm going to combine my coefficients. Negative 6 and 24 is going to give me 18. And then I'm going to keep that radical exactly the same, keep the square root of 2 the same. All right, look at 26. So let's start with trying to collect our like terms. So again, for them to be like terms, we have to have the exact same radical. So 7 square roots of 5 and negative 4 square roots of 5 are going to be alike. And then 4 square roots of 7 and 3 square roots of 7 are going to be alike. All right, so let's start with the 7 square root of 5 and the negative 4 square root of 5. So remember, you're going to combine the coefficients, 7 minus 4, and you're going to keep the radical exactly the same. So 7 minus 4 is going to give us 3 square roots of 5. All right, then look at this second pair over here. We're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to combine the coefficients, 4 plus 3, 
and I'm going to leave the radical square root of 7 exactly the same. So that would give me 7 square roots of 7. Now, these are not like terms. The square root of 5 and the square root of 7 are not identical, so there is no way that I can combine these two. That is my final answer. All right, look at 27. So for 27, we've got 3 square roots of 12 times 5 square roots of 20. So again, remember when we're multiplying, these do not have to be the same. So let's go through and let's simplify each of these. So first off, square root of 12. 12 is going to be 3 times 2 times 2. So that's what you'll see right here. We have a pair of 2's, so we can pull out a 2. We don't have a pair of 3's, so 3 is going to have to stay underneath the radical. So 3 times 2 is 6 times the square root of 3. And then let's come over here and simplify this one. So for this one, for our square root of 20, 20 is going to be 4 times 5, and 4 is going to be 2 times 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 5. So I have a pair of 2's. I can take that out. The 5 doesn't have a pair, so I'm going to have to leave it underneath. So that would be 5 times 2, or 10 square roots of 5. All right, so I'm going to put everything that's outside of the radical together. So 3 times 2 times 5 times 2. I'm going to put all that together. And then everything that is still under the radical, the square root of 3 and the square root of 2, I'm going to put those together. So 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times 2 is 60. And square root of 3 times 5 is square root of 15. All right, then for our last one, we have 5 square roots of 3 that's being multiplied by both of these, 4 square roots of 3 and 2 square roots of 8. So we're going to use our distributive property here, and we're going to take 5 square roots of 3 times 4 square roots of 3, so 5 square roots of 3 times 4 square roots of 3, plus is going to come right here. If this had been subtraction, we would have subtracted here. Uh, 5 square roots of 3 times 2 square roots of 8. Now. This is literally two problems in one. So there's one problem right there, exactly like what we just did in number 27. And then here's another problem right here, just like we did in 27. So y'all, if this were me, I would take my piece of paper and I would just cover this whole side of the problem so that I could just focus on this guy right here, okay? So let's do that. Let's go through and we're gonna take five times four, collect our coefficients. And square root of 3 times square root of 3 collect our, our radicals. So 5 times 4. And then um, for square root of 3 times square root of 3, that's square root of 9. And square root of 9 would just give us 3. So we could say 5 times 4 is 20. And 20 times 3 is 60. So I've done this whole piece right here. All right, now you could take a piece of paper and you could cover up this side of the problem and just focus on this one right here, all right? So let's go through and let's put our coefficients together. So five times two and put our radicals together, square root of three times square root of eight. So five times two is gonna give me 10. The square root of three, there's only one three underneath, so I can't simplify that, but eight will break down. Remember that eight is gonna be two times two times two. So I could take a pair of twos out and then I would have one, two left underneath. So again, if we collect our values that are outside the radical, 10 times the square root, or sorry, 10 times two is 20, and collect the values that are under the radical, square root of three times square root of two would be six. So this side over here gives us 20 square roots of six. So you can see that right here. So the first half of the problem gave us 60, and the second half of the problem gave us 20 square root of 6. Now, y'all, these are not like terms. Remember, the only way that you can add with radicals is if they both have the exact same radical. This would have to be 60 square roots of 6 plus 20 square roots of 6 for me to combine them. It's not, so this is my final answer. I'm not going to combine those any further. All right, you'll also notice there on your sheet that we said that you could have any word problem like we did in the notes or on the homework, and they just use the exact same skills that we've worked problems on here in our sample test.